Hey guys, it's Radhika here again. So today we're going to continue talking about the MCAT and we're going to continue specifically our discussion of what the MCAT really is. In this video, I want to talk to you about two major things. The first one being the types of passages that you can expect on the science sections of this exam. And then the second thing that we'll talk about are the types of skills that are going to be tested in the science section. So just a word of caution, we're going to be talking about just the three science sections in this video. That's the first one, the third one, and the fourth one. The second section that you'll see, as we've talked about previously, is that cars section. Now the types of passages and the skills that you have to know to be able to do well on this side of the exam are a little different. So I'm going to talk about that next video. But this video, well, let's talk about those three science sections. Okay, right, let's get started. So the first thing I want to draw to your attention are the types of passages that you'll be able to see on this exam, or that you should be expecting to see on this exam. And basically, there are four types that I've shown you here. The first are what we call information passages. Now, these are the passages that will test your ability to understand and evaluate your favorite journal articles. So what you'd be expecting to see here are excerpts from recently published or previously published journal articles. Doesn't matter how old or how new they are. Um, and they'd be presenting you with maybe some uh, figures, maybe some tables, maybe some equations that are embedded. You don't expect to see an entire journal article, more of what we call an adapted journal article. So that it's kind of in the 500 to 600 word range um, that you have enough time to read. And basically, they'll be asking you a series of questions that'll test some variety of skills. And we'll talk about that in the later part of this video. Okay, now the other type of passage that you can expect to see are these problem solving passages. Problem solving passages will, could be journal articles, but what they'll do is the whole point of these is to be able to test your ability to understand probable causes of and solutions to scientific problems. So they want to be able to see, are you identifying the problems that are, you know, kind of posited by this theory? And if you are, can you posit solutions? And just a note of caution, remember, you're never going to have um, a situation on this exam where you're positing a theory from scratch. Remember that it is a multiple choice exam, right? So all the theory that you come up with has to be based on an answer option that's already there. You're merely selecting what is correct based on your scientific skills. Okay, now the third are these experimental and research study passages, okay? So these are the ones that will test your rationale on the methodology, the results, the observations, the conclusions of various experiments that have been conducted. So these are kind of the ones where you'll have a hypothesis and they'll give you experiment Y and experiment Z. And based on what you're trying to test, they want to be able to see, do you have the right kind or the sound scientific skills to be able to see why methodology Y or why methodology Z is correct? Now, with the changes that happened in 2015, we are starting to see a lot more experimental and research study passages. So be aware of that. The last are these persuasive passages. Now the persuasive passages want to test your um, and test your validity of viewpoints. They want to see, do you actually have sound scientific skills or can we really posit any theory at you and you'll just buy it? Okay, so they're trying to convince you of something. And basically your job is to say, eh, based on my scientific knowledge, that's not correct. Or hey, based on my knowledge, based on what I've studied, that does seem like a very sound theory. Okay, so that's the first half talking about the passage types. The second half is more of these skills tested. Now this is super important because this has actually been something that the AMC has published. So. Here are the skills that will actually be presented to you, okay? There are four, um, and let's talk about each one of them in quite a bit of detail. Okay, the first one is what the AMC calls the scientific reasoning and problem-solving skills. 45% of the exam will be based on this skill set. So here is where 
the purpose of this is you're using your knowledge to solve problems, okay? So what you're trying to do is take that knowledge that you have from studying, from the months of studying that you've done, and you're trying to perhaps explain if certain observations are correct based on some theory that has been introduced to you in a passage. Or can you make predictions? So they're actually asking you to use your scientific judgment. Or scenarios where you're making conclusions based on the observations that were given to you in a passage. So really what I'm trying to kind of uh, focus in and emphasize on here is that this is a lot of application stuff. Knowing your scientific basics here and being able to memorize won't help you so much with this section because what you want to know is based on the knowledge that you've obtained is the information that they're throwing out at you correct? So do you have sound reasoning and problem solving skills to be able to comment on, um, judge, evaluate, or apply principles to be able to answer questions correctly? Okay, so the way you'll be asked to show this, right, is by uh, a few ways. So you, you may be asked to, about reasoning about scientific problems, principles, theories, and models that you've come across. You may be asked to analyze and evaluate scientific explanations and predictions. You may be asked to evaluate certain types of arguments um, and causes of those arguments or predictions that those arguments could make. You may ask, be asked to bring together various theories. So remember, you'll essentially be talking about three different types of sciences here. The natural sciences, the behavioral sciences, and the social sciences. So do you have the right kind of skills to bring all of those different sciences together? Can you find the relationships? Can you tie them in together? Because at the end of the day, as a practicing physician, that's what you would want to do. Um, furthermore, you may be asked to recognize certain scientific findings um, and, and actually challenge a theory that they've posited in a passage and say, hey, I know cell theory and what that passage is saying makes no sense based on cell theory and the tenets that it posits. Um, and you'd have to know cell theory extremely well in order to be able to say that. Okay, so next type of problems, uh, next type of skill that they'll test you on. And this is kind of the one that most people really like. And the reason being is because it's 35% of your exam and this is the knowledge component. So we call this section the knowledge of scientific concepts and principles. In this section, it's going to test your basic understanding of the sciences. Here, you will be asked to recognize recall, define certain terms in each of those sciences, the natural, the behavioral, and the social sciences. So this is not the applicational component so much, but just the, um, the knowledge component, okay? Here, you will be asked to show that you understand scientific concepts and principles by recognizing which ones are correct scientific principles. So they may give you a bunch of opposing theories and you have to say, all right, based on my knowledge, I know that this one is correct. Or you may be asked to identify relationships between closely related um, concepts um, or representations of a concept. Furthermore, you may be able to, or you may be asked to identify examples um, of true observations based on your knowledge, um, or even using mathematical equations to be able to solve problems correctly, okay? So 35% is this section, and it's the knowledge section of the MCAT, okay? Now the third category um, values 10% uh, of the total number of the science questions. And it's called reasoning about the design and execution of research. Now, a lot of students like this section too. So what, it, what this skill kind of tests you on is, can you do sound science? And the key word there being do sound science, okay? Um, yes, everyone can do bad science, but can you do science that makes sense, that abides by the scientific community's rules, that is actually validated, it's legitimate science. So it's evaluating the importance of methodology, basically. 
Okay, so what you'll be presented with in this case is how are past theories and observations important in devising current theories, hypotheses, experiments? Um, can you make certain types of inferences based on um, the knowledge that you have about research design? Uh, how do scientists manipulate and control certain variables? Um, what makes research bad? Um, because in order to be able to conduct good research, you ought, ought to know what makes bad research. Okay, so you'll be asked to um, share your knowledge of scientific design, of research design and methodology based on the following few things. Can you identify the role of theory in past findings and observations? Um, can you identify good testable questions, right? As we know, not every question is testable. Um, not every hypothesis is a good hypothesis. Can you figure out which ones the good ones are versus the bad ones? Can you distinguish between samples and populations and between results that do support generalizations versus ones that do not? Okay, so you have to know a little bit of statistics to be able to do well on this scale. Can you identify relationships amongst the variables in the study? And this one is so key. They want to see, can you link everything together? What's the dependent variable? What's the independent variable? Is there a confounding variable? And this is kind of applicational in the sense that having scientific knowledge is only going to help you so much. You have to be able to understand that passage and be able to comment based on the definitions you know about a confounding variable or a dependent variable and say, yep, one of those exists in this study and therefore the conclusions I can draw are that these observations are probably not good observations. Can you reason about the appropriateness, the precision, the accuracy, the validity of the tools that have been used? And can you reason um, about features of this research? Can you suggest relationships or associations between variables? Um, do you know the difference between causal relationships? Uh, what about correlational ones? And then they'll also ask you about ethical issues, if any, in this section. Okay, because ethics is concerned with a lot of research design. Now, the last is what most students don't like, unfortunately, it's the data based and statistical reasoning skills section. This is also worth 10%. And basically, it says, hey, can you do sound science because you know the right statistical principles and you know the right kind of math and data that needs to, need to be utilized? So what they're going to do is ask you to interpret a series of results or statistics or tables or data that they've collected. And they'll ask you about things like, what is the central tendency? What kind of dispersion is it that you see here? Do you know what uncertainty is? Can you draw relationships between the variables? So how they'll actually test you on this more specifically is you're going to be asked to use, analyze, um, and interpret data in the form of figures, in the form of tables, in the form of graphs. Furthermore, you'll be analyzing things like mean, medium, and mode, which are measures of central tendency, and you'll have to know things like dispersion. What is the interquartile range? What is range? What is standard deviation? Do you know about systematic and random error? Can you talk about statistical significance and what it means for a study? And can you comment on that a little further? You're going to be using data to explain certain types of relationships. Do you know the difference between what is a causational relationship versus what is a cor correlation? Um, can you figure out what kind of real world implications some sort of data has? What kind of real world situation would the data matter in? Or what does, it, uh, what does it imply if we were to extrapolate that data and put it into some sort of a population of animals? So these are the four sections. Again, um, the first skill here is going to be worth 45% of the questions. The second skill, 35%, and the last two, 10% each. Now, I, this was my conclusion for today. I hope you learned a little bit about the types of passages and the types of skills that are tested on just the science sections.
Um, what I want to leave you off with, though, is a bit of advice. Now, the AMC, when the exam was being changed in 2015, came out with a manual called What's in the New MCAT 2015? It's a PDF version, um, and it, there was some practice problems in there, and there's lots of further definition based on the four skills that we've just talked about. I strongly urge that you download it. It's a pretty hefty manual. It's a, it's, I'd say it's about 150 pages long, but they've actually shown you types of questions based on each of the skills that we've talked about. So if you want to familiarize yourself with what the skills really mean on the MCAT, I strongly urge you to download this manual. The link is posted in the description, um, and I think it's a great tool. So, just to recap, in today's video, we talked about the four different types of passages that you can expect to see in the science um, uh, sections of this exam and the skills that are also tested in the science section. I hope you found it useful, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Take care.